The Water Conservation Garden is located in East San Diego. We're finding during this time when we are unable to gather that the garden is also located within each of our hearts and we are so glad to be able to present how to hire a professional landscaper to you today, sponsored by our friends at the San Diego County Watershed Protection Program. With us is Pam Meisner, the Director of Operations and Programs at the Water Conservation Garden. She's also my mentor. She's a lifelong educator. She was named Woman of the Year by the East County Chamber of Commerce, although many of those who know Pam would say she's more like the Woman of the Century. She is a multiple recipient of the sdg e Eco Ambassador Award. And as the founder of the Miss Smarty Plants Education Program, Pam helped the garden to earn the Gila Award, which is the highest honor in the state of California for environmental leadership. She's gonna help share some practical advice with you today. Well, thank you, Jillian. That was such a nice intro. But I am, I'm Pam Meissner here, but more importantly, I'm Miss Smarty Plants from the water conservation garden and this is just my happy place and I'm so happy to invite you all to my class and I want to let you know that we have some great partners and today this class is being provided by one of our favorites it's the San Diego County watershed protection program and they have been so wonderful with us in providing funding so that we can bring you this type of education so without further ado, I'm going to kind of go into my presentation. And the very first thing I want to say is when I say the words drought tolerant or water wise, what's the image that comes into your mind? It's probably cactus, rock, dry, that kind of thing. Well, I am here today to show you how beautiful drought tolerant and water rock wise landscaping can be. All throughout this presentation, you will be seeing slides of landscapes that are considered drought tolerant and water wise, and they don't look anything like the image you have in your mind. So hopefully after this presentation today, you will have a total different image when someone says water wise or drought tolerant landscape. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Now this is my best slide because I don't know how many of you have ever gone out and thought I really want to do something but I have no idea what to do. I don't even know where to start. And you, you walk outside and you're looking around and you have a side yard, a front yard, a backyard. Where do I start? What do I do? All of that stuff. So what I want to say first and foremost is don't get overwhelmed. We've all been there. And I, you know, a little trick for me sometimes is to phase the work that you want done. So say you would like a drought tolerant landscape and you've had some, some grass in there now, which really is just dirt and weeds now, and you want to kind of make it better and you kind of don't even really know where to go. Start with one area, just get one area in your mind. Just, it doesn't have to be the entire landscape, putting in a pool, all the hardscape. Just focus on one of the areas that you want. Now, after you do that, so here's some, here's some basics, and we can email this slideshow to you. Um, if anybody would like it, please just send Jillian a little note saying that you would like this, this slide. So you, it, in order for you not to get overwhelmed, we are going to choose an area, right? And then we want to sort of get a budget in mind, just a budget. Now I have an average figure out there of $8 a square foot and that can go up. It's really not going to come down, but it can go up if you're gonna add hardscape, if you're gonna add a lot of different things like that. Um, but I would give yourself a good eight to $10 uh, dollars, um, a square foot of improving your landscape. So you're gonna take the area of your yard, which is length times width, and that will give you a rough budget, a rough budget. Now, if you have turf, and a lot of people had it, and because of the water restrictions, or because of the weather, because of our drought, all of those things, that, that turf sort of went to a mix of weeds and turf and dirt and 
things like that. But I encourage you all, and I'm going to give you references at the end of this so you don't have to worry about, oh, writing everything down. I'm going to give you references at the end for you to find rebates within your water districts. Now, your water district is who you pay your water bill to. And if you don't happen to know what your water district is, send me your zip code, and I can probably help you out with your, with your um, address as well. But there is a site that I'll send you to at the end where you can type in your zip code and address, and it will tell you if, in fact, you don't happen to know. So nowadays, many of the water districts in the San Diego County Water Authority are offering a lot of rebates. They're offering rebates for sprinklers. They're offering rebates for removing your turf, all of those things. The biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is to get an idea of what you want your landscape to look like. You, you have an idea in your head, whether it's you know going through uh, your neighborhood, um, driving around, getting pictures out of magazines, visiting gardens, and we hope that the very first spot that you come to is the water conservation garden, because that's what we're all about. But you get an idea of what it is that you like. You, whatever idea, whatever look that you want, and plan, plan, plan. <laughs> that will save you the most money. I am gonna intersperse um, uh, tips in here on how you actually can save money. And one of the biggest ways is to plan, <coughs> excuse me. So what you wanna do is you really, you want to plan out sort of what it is. Now you don't have to have the, you don't need to be the end all be all because there are professionals out there that will help you with that. And one of the biggest benefits and money saving things that you can do is to have a landscape design consultation. Now we offer them at the garden, and I think today, Jillian, aren't we offering a discounted $10 coupon? Yeah, we're actually doing 10% on the three consultations, and it's- Oh, uh, wonderful, wonderful. Something that, uh, that people send me their email in the chat, they can get that code. Perfect. So what that will do is, is these are people that this is what they do. They know plants, they know soil, they know temperatures, they know which side of your house is south facing, north facing, all of those things, irrigation. And believe it or not, all of those things come into play, play when you want a successful landscape. You have to kind of have all those things in. And we don't, we don't know those things. But for the cost, and I think, I don't know, members, I think it's $80 and I mean, members is $65 and maybe non-members of the garden is 75 or 80, something like that. Um, and then with your coupon, it is the best money that you can spend because they will send you in the right direction and they will get you what it is that you want, not what somebody else wants for your landscape. At the garden, we have a lot of resources on our website. We have a virtual tour of the garden. We have a lot of um, plant identification and trees and things like that. We have a Nifty 50 brochure that shows, um, these are all drought tolerant plants and their trees, their ground covers, their ornamentals, they're all kinds of things and they're, and they're very, very beautiful. So that's the, that's the main thing. But I do want to talk about a consultation that will really, put your mind at ease. So this is just another picture of another beautiful um, drought tolerant landscape. A lot of people, you know, have said, oh, drought tolerant, there's not a lot of color. You know, it's kind of drab. Well, um, not really. No, it really isn't. And a well-designed space um, in your home can be just stunning, just stunning and beautiful. So I'm gonna get into the design phase and a little bit about, um, a, a lot of us wanna do it ourselves, and that's great. I'm a, I'm a big do it myselfer, but I draw the line when it's beyond my knowledge base. So I do a little of both. 
I bring in, I know kind of in my mind what I want. I know the colors that I want. I may not know exactly what plant will do well in a specific type of soil. So that's when you bring in a professional. Now there are lots of different professionals out there that you can contact and the price tag is a little different on all of them. So if you hire a landscape company, that's um, Joe's Arborist, Joe, you know, Joe's Arborist, and he comes in. Now he's a landscape company and he's going to do a lot of the physical, the physical work. He may not have a background in design. He may not know um, the, the total magic of using drought tolerant plants, but he is a, a worker bee that can kind of come in and remove your weeds and bring in topsoil and all that kind of stuff. A landscape designer is one that takes either pictures, uh, you either bring um, pictures of uh, the space that you want designed. A lot of times they can use Google Earth to kind of get um, a bird's eye view of your property and you can point out things. And they take that specific area that you want a, de uh, a design on and give you options of, do you want a lot of color? Do you want low maintenance? Do you like, do you want to use mulch to design with? Do you want hardscape in there? And most importantly, irrigation. Irrigation is that one part kind of of everybody's thought process that kind of goes by the wayside. We all know that we need it, but when was the last time we really checked up on our irrigation? And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that coming up. And then a landscape architect, I'm gonna go right into that. They will give you, they, landscape designers do not need to be licensed in California. Landscape contractors should be licensed and you should never use somebody who's not contracted. And I will go into a, a big a story about that in a minute. But the landscape architect, they will, will really give you a complete drawing, spaced out, everything called out for you. Um, and those are usually used um, for, for new home designs or if you're taking out everything that you have and want to turn it into something else, they're the ones that can bring you a lot of um, uh, uh, mathematical and, and um, specifics on the PSI of concrete and how thick it needs to be and all that stuff. The landscape designer is, is my go-to. They have a lot of knowledge. They will give you a plant list. They will come out and look at your property. There's a lot of things that they can do. And it is in the medium price range. Um, I have a little note down there, be careful because sometimes you get what you pay for. Um, and we've all experienced that. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about before you hire anybody. These are three things that I want you to do no matter what you're doing. Who, I, I don't care if you desire, uh, if you uh, hire a designer, a contractor, an architect, I want you to check these three things. It's really important to check references. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask whoever it is that you're hiring, whatever professional, that you would like references of somebody whose project is one year or more old. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. One year or more old. And the reason I say this is that a lot of times when we have contractors and professionals come out and they redo our landscape for the first, I don't know, three to six months, it is looking great. And then sometimes you start to see deterioration. You start to see the plants looking not so healthy. Maybe the irrigation system isn't up to speed. If you look at a professional's installation that is a year or more old, that will give you a really good um, determination as to the quality and the knowledge that that installation took. 
Now I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories about things that have happened to me and I'm sure they've happened to you. But a lot of times contractors will come in and you may not have a big plan in mind, but you're kind of relying on them. And you'll say, oh, you know, I, I kind of want a, a bushy shrub here, but I want color over here. And they will recommend to you anything that they have not used on their last job. So they, they may have a bunch of Indian hawthorn, or they may have a bunch of something left over from another job. And they will just say, oh yeah, that will look really good here, and that will look really good there. I want your landscape transformation to be what it is that you envision and what you like. So that I'm gonna go back to the plan, plan, plan. Get an idea of what you like. And then have them give you pictures, go to nurseries and look at the plants that they're saying. I mean, especially if they're using um, uh, the Latin form uh, of the name, ask them to also give you the common name so that you can look it up on the internet, you can go out and look at it, you can see what it looks like, you know, come to the garden. Because what you do is you can see what those plants look like in five years, uh, what it looked like, um, you know, in a 10 year period of growth, a 15 year period of growth. Because a lot of times when we're doing our landscape, the very next day after it's all done, we want it to look all filled in. Well, that truly isn't gonna happen because what we don't want to do is over plant. And what we do want to do is remember that we have living plants and they take time to grow. And we need to give them space to grow into their foliage. So when you first have a landscape done, it's going to look a little more sparse than it will three years down the road. But the true genius in that is planting plants that will grow into themselves. So you have to have a little bit of patience as well going through this. Um, the BBB is also a really, really great place to call. Um, you also want a contractor that is licensed. Um, unfortunately, some contractors that aren't licensed, if they fall out of the tree on your yard or if they get hurt on your yard, guess who's responsible? In most cases, it's you. So, um, Contractors that are licensed also carry the proper insurances and um, will give you a guarantee, will give you a written estimate. Also, um, when someone is coming out to talk to you about your installation, this is really important. That person that comes out may not necessarily be the person who's actually physically doing the installation. So you're telling all your hopes and dreams to this person that comes out here. And then he's telling it to his foreman. And then his foreman is telling it to his workers. And by the time it goes down that telephone line, you wanted a, um, a non-fruiting plum and you got a plum natal. Now, how does that happen? It's because <laughs> you started off with one thing and by the time it got to somebody else, it came up with something totally different. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to make sure that whoever you are talking to and talking about this stuff is there the day the crew comes to start your installation. I want them there. They need also need to be coming back and checking and making sure. Because we don't know when you, when you order, um, uh, a tree, the tree, the, the stem is only going to be about this big. It may not even have a lot of leaves on it, so you won't even know what tree that is. And you just want to make sure that what you have in your mind, what you've paid for, what you've ordered is actually happening. So that's really important. I want to make sure that you guys, whoever you talk to, they need to be there that day. They need to be there upon completion, definitely and they need to be there throughout the process. The other thing, uh, while you're looking at this beautiful picture, the other thing that I also want to uh, just give you a hint at is anytime you do construction, add two weeks, no matter what. Sometimes it's a month, but all, you know, if they say, you know, we can get this done in, 
in uh, yeah in a month's time, <clears throat> figure on two months. It it will just it will just alleviate a lot of stressors in you. Just always add one month on. And if they get it done before then, great. But just add one month on to it. <clears throat> this picture that you're looking at, these um, uh, pictures here are a lot of California natives and the really cool use of mulch. That mulch is just making um, a really nice meandering path, uh, pathway. And mulch is fabulous. That is one thing that every landscape that you have needs to include. A couple of things that mulch does is it really helps with weed abatement immensely. And it also helps with saving water. The majority of your water is used outdoors. It's not used indoors. But if you use mulch correctly in your landscape, you can save 40% of your outdoor water bill. 40%, that's a lot of your outdoor water, watering bill. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about ways that you can save money and get mulch. Um, let me just go back to that right there. Um, the Miramar Landfill has a whole mulch um, division out there. And for the people in the city of San Diego, I believe that if you go out there with your garbage cans, um, you can take as much mulch as you want. You can also drive a pickup truck in there and they will load it for you. And I think the cost is uh, six to $12 a truckload of mulch. And it's, it's decent mulch. And mulch does smell because it's, it's the rotting and the, and the, the procuring of all of the um, ingredients in the living matter. There's another way to get sometimes free mulch is call a landscaper, a tree trimmer in your neighborhood, or if you happen to see one at your neighbors or in the neighborhood, they would much rather dump their mulch on your easement or on your driveway than pay for the dump fees. So always find that out. Um, there's actually a website that you can go to and we can send that information to you as well about um, tree trimmers that are in your area that have appointments and um, instead of paying the dump fees, they would rather just dump it in the same neighborhood. There's two types of mulch though that you don't want. You don't want eucalyptus mulch, and you never want rubber mulch. Rubber mulch gets as hot as asphalt. So whenever you have rubber mulch down, instead of keeping the water in your soil from evaporating and keeping it in there cool, it heats it up and it evaporates very, very quickly. Eucalyptus has an oil in it. And if you notice around um, any eucalyptus tree or groves, not much grows underneath that because of the oil in it. So those are the two types of mulch that you don't want. Tree trimmers are not allowed to give you any type of mulch that has a weevil in it, a bowl, or any type of, of, of insect activity in it. They are not allowed to, um, to, to give that out and Miramar Landfill is not allowed to take that. So that's destroyed. So you don't have to worry about that. So here are some things that you can um, look for when you get, when you hire your professional. These are the things that I want to make sure are in your proposal. So the design plan, that is, that is first and foremost. You have to have a plan. Um, and then um, hydrozoning is a really great way of saving water within your landscape. And all hydrozoning means is that you're grouping um, plants that have the same water need in the same area. Kind of makes sense? So plants that use a whole lot of water aren't really necessarily intermixed with plants that don't need very much water at all. Um, you should get this layout. You should get a little plan uh, that's over to the right of your screen there. Something similar to that. Everything is called out on it where it's going to be. Irrigation is huge, as I mentioned that before, and that goes hand in hand with landscaping. You must have 
irrigation in order to have a successful landscape. Now I do want to throw this tip in there for you. Say you've had turf out in the area that you're redoing and you had um, pop-up sprinkler system already in that area, you don't have to remove that and put in another system. That system that you have can be retrofitted so that it fits and meets the new design area. So a lot of times those pop-up sprinklers that come up that really aren't efficient for a lot of type of landscape, your landscape uh, professional will be able to cap off some of them, close them off so that they're not watering areas that don't need to. And then they'll be able to retrofit, meaning take that pop-up, put a new kind of piece on it that they have available nowadays that can turn that pop-up then into a drip system. And it's called an octopus. And what it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, a sprinkler part um, that is round like that. And it has six to eight little um, nipples that come off of it where you put tubing onto and that tubing then leads to individual plants. So you don't have to have a whole new irrigation system. What you have to have is one that actually works for the plants that you have and where they're placed. And that can be done by retrofitting. Now, a lot of, a lot of professionals aren't going to offer that up. That's why I'm here. I want you to ask for that. I want you to talk to somebody that knows about that. And if you get a professional that says, oh, I can't do that, um, I don't know how to do that, then look for somebody, look for somebody new because it's a very simple process, but one that can save you lots and lots of money, lots of money. Um, do it yourself or hire um, somebody. Like I said, I do both. Um, one way where you can save money by doing it yourself is to clean up, to get rid of the weeds, to get out there with the hula ho, to um, you know, use the physical part of it. Um, and that will save you a lot of money because then you're not paying an hourly rate for a professional to do it. So we talked a little bit about mulch, right? I'm a big, big, big um, fan of mulch. And um, even when you're potting plants, you need to have mulch on them. You will not believe how much it will save. Now in your landscape, three to four inches is what um, a minimum that I would go for. It's three to four inches. And that should be covering all the bare ground um, and up to the base of your plants. So if you have a tree and then you have some area and then you have a couple of bushes and plants, all of the dirt area should be covered with mulch. One, again, it does save on weed abatement. It, it helps those not grow so much. And also it does keep the water in the soil. Plants, in order for them to survive and be healthy, they need cool roots. And the way we do that is by cooling the ground on top of them and keeping the water inside. Um, weed and pest control. Um, of course, we don't like pesticides. Pesticides are really affecting the butterflies and the bees and all of those signature species of an ecosystem. So the more that you can not use a pesticide, use some natural remedies, or when you're starting to do your landscape, put in that little extra effort and, and use a weed cloth or things like that um, right up front instead of going back and go, oh, I should have done that. It will really save you a lot of money as well. The very last one is maintenance. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. That's what we always forget about. We think, oh, we have this beautiful landscape. We can go out there, we can take care of it. I, I don't know who all is on this call right now, but when was the last time any of us really checked our irrigation system, our clocks, our sprinklers? And you know, I am Miss Smarty Plants, but I will tell you, I'm not exactly sure how to program my time clock. <laughs> so, that's when you can get a professional to help with that. And that actually maintenance, if you hire someone to come back once a month and kind of keep up your landscape, make sure that they are checking the irrigation. How many of you have gone outside and um, 
our sprinklers usually come on very early in the morning or at dusk. And a lot of times we're not awake early in the morning. So you don't know if you've got a geyser coming up. You don't know if you have a clogged emitter. You don't know all that stuff until you see your plants start to deteriorate. And you're like, oh, wonder what that is. A lot of times it's just a clogged emitter or the emitter will pop off and things like that. So maintenance, maintenance, maintenance is huge. Um, erosion control, if you have a hillside, that's always something to think about when you're first putting in your landscape. Say you have a, a hillside and um, you're going to replant it. What you don't want to happen is all of that loose dirt until those plants start to root and hold your hillside in to wash away, to blow away. And there, there's jute matting that can go on there. There are straw wattles that can go at the bottom of that hillside. There's all of these different things um, that you can use in the meantime while your plants are growing. Um, again, um, yeah, here I see that 10% off um, if you're gonna go ahead and do um, book it with the garden. We have such great ones, they're awesome. Um, fertilizer. Fertilizer um, is good, but it's not the end all be all. And I wanna talk a little bit about soil here. A lot of times, uh, many times, everywhere in San Diego, the soil's awful. It's, it's just awful here. And what a lot of contractors do is they will come in, clear um, the soil that you have, and then bring in beautiful amended topsoil. And it's, I mean, it's just beautiful and the plants love it. And they'll put that on top of your ground. Well, what happens is after those plants go in there and they start growing down and those roots start stabilizing and they hit your natural soil that you have there, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And they're gonna start to die. So here's my rule of thumb. You take your native soil, and you add topsoil to it. You don't put it on top of it. So I use the, the uh, three, two to two, uh, the one third to two thirds, or the one fourth to three fourths. And that's two thirds your natural soil, or three fourths whatever soil you have in there. They need to come in, rototill it, dig it up, aerate it, and then they bring in the other one third or one fourth of that beautiful topsoil with compost in it and all kinds of good vitamins and they mix that in with your native soil and then the plants get that extra boost like taking vitamins they get that extra boost when they're first planted and then they're used to the type of soil that you have does that make sense i hope so okay another another beautiful landscape how many of you um and jillian you can tell me um, I don't know if you can see everybody, but um, raise your hand if you think these pictures I'm showing you are really pretty or something that you would like in your landscapes. Okay, I see a couple of hands going up there. So these are some, some things that I, that, I, that I already talked about, but it is in a slide um, so that you don't have to remember everything that I'm saying. Uh, a soil test. Um, in your yard, you probably have, depending on how much property you have and where it's located, you probably have different soil all throughout your property. Um, a soil test, you can actually do a soil test, but it's always good to have a professional um, that you're hiring come out and do one as well. Um, what I have done in the past is you go out where you're going to redo your, your landscaping and dig a hole, uh, a couple of them and dig a hole maybe about six inches wide and maybe about eight inches deep, and you pour water in that. And you see how fast or how slow the water drains through that soil. Now this is, this is just for percolation of your water, how you're testing. Sometimes you come back in an hour and the water's totally gone. Sometimes you come back and there's still a lot of water in there. That will determine what type of soil you have, if it has a lot of clay in it, if it's very sandy. That will give you a little bit of an idea of what plants do best in that type of soil. 
adding amendments we already talked about um, doing that with your soil at any time I'm doing a raised planter bed or I'm potting plants or I'm putting in a lot of new plants I always add uh, a soil amendment um, I have a good friend his name is Harold Bailey and he teaches a class for us at the garden I call him dirty Harry why? Because he talks about dirt. He teaches a whole class on soil and why soil is so important. And all of the, the wonderful microbes and things that are in soil, because I will tell you this, if you don't have good soil, it doesn't matter how much time and effort you put into the plants that you're putting in there. Soil is what gives it that, uh, it's the make or break. So all of these things kind of go together. So. Uh, the next time Harold's teaching, take a look at that class. It's a great one. Oh, well, who is that? Who is that over there? So I want to talk a little bit about something that I just did, and that was put in a front yard landscape using all of the water saving methods um, that we're talking about. So this is at the garden, and this is our brand new classroom. Oh my gosh, you guys. If you haven't, haven't been there yet, as soon as we reopen our trails, you have to come. It's a beautiful new classroom that gives you the feel of an indoor, outdoor space. And it overlooks our beautiful Buckner Garden. But this is the front entrance of it. And I'm standing on a water saving technique. Those are called permeable pavement. So in between there is dirt. Now, when you go there now, you will see that in between all of that was planted. I have a creeping thyme in there, and I have a sebum planted in between all of those rocks. So what happens is when the rain comes, it soaks down into the soil there, and it makes a beautiful, beautiful pathway. You can put a, a wheelchair on it. You can ride a bicycle over it. You can walk on it. It's a very durable and um, wonderful way to give you a specific look. Also at this front yard, we have installed um, from our guttering system, a rain chain that goes down into a water catchment basin. And let me just go and see if I get a close up. No, um, directly behind me, um, is where I'm going to put my cursor right here. Directly behind me right now is where this is installed. And the rain chain comes right down there. And then right in the bottom, we have dug a pit, filled it with gravel, put decorative rocks over it. We lined it so that the water, uh, because it's very close to the foundation of the building. So we lined it with a rubber pond lining, then put gravel in there then put cobblestones in there so that when the water comes down, it's saved through the rain chain, it gathers in this small pit. And then what we did was we took the cap roof tiles, the clay cap roof tiles on your roof, for those of you that have clay um, uh, shingles, and we turned them upside down and we made a a water pathway that goes from that basin across the pathway, fans out into two or three different directions and feeds the garden bed that's right over here. It's kind of amazing. I mean, it's really, really amazing. Whoops. There it is. Oh, thank you, Jillian. There it is. So here is um, our basin. And it looks actually very, very pretty. You, we planted it up. And then here is that waterway. And you can see how well it did. It takes water all from here and puts it in there. Kind of amazing. And guess what? That that waterway right there, um, I think it was, uh, I don't know, maybe $15, maybe because all you're taking are the, the uh, capping, the, the ridge line roof tiles and just turning them upside down. Again, another way to um, also conserve everything that we do. Over here on the left, we have a really cool rain barrel 
that is um, on our on our um, guttering system right here. We have the guttering system so that it slants just like this, just a little bit, so that one side goes to the rain chain and the other side goes to the rain barrel. So it is hooked up and that rain barrel is, is elevated and installed correctly. It has a filtering system and it has a hose nozzle right on the front so that the area over here, we can then water. The rain barrel, if you're gonna use a, a rain barrel, you always wanna get one that's dark. Don't get a white rain barrel because light can come in there and cause algae. So California Earth Care, that was the contractor that I used, called the Better Business Bureau, talked to his references, went by and saw some of his work, um, had a schedule. He actually came in on schedule, which was kind of uh, wonderful, but um, it really worked out when you follow a plan, it really works out. Uh, this is just uh, um, a, an area here where this is all planted. And when you, when you guys come back to the garden, you'll see that it's kind of grown in. Remember I was talking about how it's gonna be a little sparse at first? Well, this was a week after it was planted. And you'll notice all of this is all mulch. Everything is covered in mulch. I want you to also look at this really cool decorative wall back here that I'm pointing to. This was the old concrete slab that our patio was on, that our new um, classroom is on now, but we had a patio out there and it had a, a concrete slab. We broke that concrete up, used it for a retaining wall, and Paul, our horticulture director, stained it to make it look like that. This area here is just colored gravel. Um, we used it as an artistic um, uh, part of mulching. We have two different colors and they kind of blend and swerve into one another. So all of that stuff we made. This is what um, it was looking like as it was going through the process. I wanted to include these pictures so that you could see kind of what the stages of your landscape as it starts to get installed will look like. Here is that rain barrel. I bet you didn't even notice it was a rain barrel. And here's our little spigot where we put the hose and everything onto it. Again, you can see the little plantings if you look really, really close. Some are bright, bright green and some are dark green. And we use that for um, style and design. This is just another angle. Um, over here is a, just a little different color gravel. And this is a different color gravel. We built this nice little pergola out front. And this was a very, very large um, area to do. And I can give you an idea of the cost for doing all of this, including all of the plants, including the work, including the, um, the um, irrigation, including the um, rain barrels, um, all of the pavers, all of that stuff. It was about $22,000 start to finish. And it was a fairly big area. If you take a look back here, this is, um, this is a whole separate area from this area, from, whoops, whoops, making you crazy from this area. So it was, it was a pretty nice size area. But start to finish was really great. That also included design. So I'm just getting to the end of my presentation. And again, this is drought tolerant landscaping at its best. Look how beautiful all of that stuff is. That um, it's very lush. It's it's um, pretty, and the best part about it is not only does it save water, but usually these types of landscaping are very low maintenance. 